Can you take me through the series of events? You guys lose to Jacksonville on Thursday night, and then you go home for the weekend. What was Sunday like when you saw all those scores coming in? You know, I still stand by what we talked about um, after that uh, uh, Jacksonville game in terms of, you know, it's not about the playoffs. It's a bigger thing right now. You know, we're, we're kind of down on the mat. Uh, we got to be able to pick ourselves up, and uh, we can't really think about the playoffs until we stand back up and dust ourselves off and get back to work. We've been battling. Uh, that I won't ever take away from our guys, but now we got to find a way to get back on the winning side. What are Mike White's best attributes, and what are you hoping he can provide the offense as he returns to the lineup? He just needs to be him. You know, he's a, he's really good with the timing and rhythm of the play, uh, getting the ball where it needs to get to. He'll, he'll push it downfield if he has to. He'll take checkdowns if you give it to him, and uh, you know, he just does a really good job uh, running the offense. And um, you know, we've got, got a good group of skill guys, we've got good backs, got uh, an old line that's fighting its tail off, and just got to try to find a way to piece it together for a couple games and see what happens. You mentioned it the other day. Can you talk about his career arc and what maybe others can learn from it in, in terms of his persistence throughout all this? Yeah, I, um, I think more often than not, uh, you know, we get lost in the anomalies of football. We get lost in the Joe Burrows, the Mahomes, uh, uh, all the uh, the Garrett Wilsons and the Sauce Gardeners who just who, who strike a match and they're they're on fire already. Um, I'd say 95% of the league took took time, took a year, two years, three years, four years to to find their stride. And you get a look at a guy like Quincy Williams on our team, who Jacksonville gave up on, and uh, young man's playing good football for us. And you know. Um, and you look at a guy who we're about to play, Geno Smith, who's kind of bounced around but has kind of found his niche. And uh, so it takes time. So you look at a guy like Mike White who started in Dallas and gets cut from Dallas. He gets claimed here and he gets cut three or four times or whatever it was here. And we come in and, you know, he's done a really nice job just continuing to keep his head down, continue to work and uh, take the coaching that uh, has been provided to him by Rob and uh, uh, Mike LaFleur and he's he's doing a really nice job and people forget he's only started what seven games or something like that so uh, he's still a pup in terms of just overall play. Speaking of pups, Pete Carroll, he always has a childlike exuberance about him. What has he meant to you throughout the years? Um, you know his, as a, um, you know when we, when we were all let go in uh, Houston, uh, just needed a job and probably the luckiest thing that ever happened to me uh, as a 30 year old or however old I was uh, married my we had one child three months old to go there uh, and to learn how much learn so much about myself not even just aside from the game of football because there, there was a lot of learning from a football standpoint but to learn about myself because of the things that he challenged us on from a character from a character standpoint as individuals how are we developing ourselves as coaches uh, he was instrumental in all of it and, uh, and very thankful for him. What was that experience like 2011 to 2013? Because I think it ended with you getting a championship ring right here at MetLife yeah. Stadium. Yeah, um, you know, you learn that you can do things different. You know, of, uh, God, I was a QC and we had the number one defense in football and I was home by 8 o'clock every night to put my kids to bed. Uh, that, you know, ended up being, we ended up having two more in Seattle. But um, you know, it just and it's not necessarily that. Oh well, we didn't work. It was just it was just efficient and confident in what we were doing and the way we were teaching our players and uh, just being with Gus Bradley and Dan Quinn and Ken Norton Jr. and all those guys and just the um, what is scheme and what is football and what what are we actually trying to get done and um, are we using our time wisely or are we wasting it guarding our desks and. Um, just the whole thing meant, you know, just the whole experience was eye-opening. And then obviously for me as a, as a father, a friend, a, 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 a husband, all of it, uh, a sibling, son, and uh, it was just a tremendous learning experience. How about your battles over the years with the Seahawks when you were in San Francisco? Oh, even when we were, in, uh, it just seemed like even when I was in Seattle, that, that war with San Francisco, there was always that battle. Um, and then when I got to San Francisco, it was, it was rekindled. I mean, those were epic battles. I mean, shoot, the uh, 2019 season, uh, last game of the year, Sunday Night Football, ended on a tackle that was that close to the goal line. So, uh, and all for the one seed in the playoffs, either the one or the five seed. That was the year we went to the Super Bowl. But uh, they, were, they were epic battles, uh, a lot of bumps and bruises along the way. And uh, 
Uh, going up to Seattle is a fun atmosphere. It's gonna be a fun. Uh, it'll be a fun game. How do they attack you offensively? It seems like they got Kenneth Walker going again last week, and they got dynamic threats on the outside with DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett might yeah, they, be back in the lineup. Yeah, they've done a great job with the talent level on that team. Uh, obviously, DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, if he gets back, running back Kenneth Walker, Michigan State. Yep, go green. Um, <laughs> but. Uh, He's, they're, they're extremely talented, very fast, very, very fast. Marquis Goodwin, very, very fast uh, uh, group. And, um, you know, their O-line is young. They've invested a lot in their O-line over the past year, and they're they're playing with a lot of continuity. And then Gino just looks uh, rejuvenated. He's, he's getting the ball to his athletes, and they're making a lot of plays for him. Do you see similarities and parallels when you look at these two teams? How about the draft classes in 2022 and the contributions both squads are getting? Yeah, young teams. Uh, uh, made you know Seattle obviously they you know different that we're building they kind of restarted uh, and uh, so you kind of put yourselves in the same uh, in the mold and you look at them they're very young at very key spots and uh, they play with a lot of juice a lot of energy and uh, um, they play fast they're you know physical kind of the it, it does feel like we're looking in the mirror. Everything is team focus but can I ask you about your four pro bowlers and what you can say about that quartet? And I was talking to Sauce Gardner inside the studio here the other day. He said, I really think we should have had a fifth in former Seahawk, DJ Reed. Yeah. Um, you know, to go through all of them, Quinnen was an easy one. I mean, the guy's dominant on the inside. Sauce has been fantastic outside. Uh, Hardy's two years now just been one of the more dominant special teamers in football. Uh, really excited for CJ because I, I don't, the fanfare for CJ was the smallest out of all the Pro Bowlers from our squad, but the recognition by coaches and peers was uh, through the roof, and uh, which is a, the ultimate testament uh, when when your teammates or when your peers and your coaches around the league are watching your tape and like, yeah, C.J. Mosley, that that means that means the world. And uh, but yeah, D.J. being a third alternate, he'll end up at the Pro Bowl. I think he, the third alternate is u usually uh, gets in, but uh, he's been playing at a Pro Bowl level and. Uh, and I know Ahmad has been getting a lot of uh, a lot of love and a lot of fanfare, but DJ on the other side is every bit of uh, deserving. Thanks, Coach. Thank you.